everyone. I am digging into my own planner <laughs> and I was having shower thoughts as one does. And I, you know, because when I do this planning system, it takes a long time usually um, because I tend to really think about things kind of in the background. And then when I make a decision like pen to paper done, whatever. So the part that takes a while I hesitate to say is the thinking part. Okay. Which is why I always encourage people not to rush this process and to really think about like, what were your goals last year? What are your goals this year? Like what is reasonable? What do you want to accomplish? So on and so forth. And so when you start, when you open this book, of course, like honestly, there's like a definition of why we named it dogged. And then you jump into like how we use this planner and like goal setting. Okay. And by the way, if you get to the back of the planner, you get a whole course for a dollar. So turn to the back of the planner, but that's not what this is about. What this is about is this pyramid. Okay. So I used to teach goal setting that it was really just about outcome and process goals. The outcome goals being the results, the cues in this case, the goals I want to accomplish in this upcoming year and lifetime for my dogs, as well as the next three to six months, right? I lay it all out. Um, um, but then process goals, which I've always said are like kind of the things that you have to do in order to get to the outcome, right? A uh, process goal might be like for a run, might be like run connected, make sure I'm maintaining good eye contact. Um, you know, um, cue my dog early enough, right? On turns and what, what have you, which is for obedience as well as agility. So, um, those are process goals. Okay. And so for the longest time, I only talked about those two levels. And then I kind of had an aha moment. And that is when I came up with this pyramid and I added a top and a bottom, okay? And the reason I'm bringing this up is because when I am um, putting down my goals for the year, like one of my goals for Moxie is to, I'm gonna go for and try to get in the Invitational this year. It is such a long shot. Like it is mathematically possible, Okay, but it is such a long shot that it's it's just a long shot. It's a look long shot. It would be high risk when you get to the page about the bubbles. It's kind of high risk, okay? And then I just added that I want her to go to the Invitational for Agility and Fast Cat. Oh, that would be fun, right? Because there's not a ton of burners doing Fast Cat these days, so fine. So, but what that means is that I am also making that a decision, okay? And a decision means that when I am faced with choices, like I could do a rally trial or an agility trial, I'm gonna pick the agility trial for her. If I could do um, nothing or barn hunt maybe, which I love to do, but barn hunt or fast cat, I might choose fast cat. So what decisions, that's the tippy top, help us do is prioritize those outcome goals when we want it all. <laughs> uh, last year in 2022, or this past year, in 2022, one of my decisions was finish up their Grandmaster Draft Dog. And for those of you who don't know, draft is carding and it's kind of like our championship. Like it's the, it's the most things you can do. And, and it takes a total of 20 cues. And um, so I put that above everything else. So I skipped a beloved agility trial that, that I really like to go to because I went on this like road trip out to the Midwest to try to quote, finish their, their titles. And happily I was successful, yay for me. That's a celebration for this year as I look back. Um, but that was a decision I made that helped me prioritize everything else. Okay, so that's really important that as you're doing this, you almost like when you get done with your goals for the year, like as I turn to my page and I have goals for each dog, I'm going to start to like circle some things that are the most important thing, right? Because yes, going back to Moxie, I would like her to go to the Invitational. I would like her to now go to the Invitational for Fast Cat. I just came up with that this morning. Um, I also want her to finish her CDX and I also want her to work on her rally rock. She's like at the halfway point. Okay. That's a lot. It's a lot of big things. It's a lot of things that take a lot of um, repetition, a lot of trials to do that. But at the top of the list now, I've now decided that, okay, if faced with these other choices, I'm doing this. Okay. So that is big. At the bottom of the pyramid, just because I can't leave that unfinished, um, are skills, okay? And skills at the bottom. And sometimes we need a skill 
or we need to brush up on a skill in order to do the thing, right? In order to achieve, even do the process goal. Like maybe I'm not good at cueing my dog early. Like maybe my footwork and obedience is terrible and that's why she never knows where we're going. I don't know. I think there's a lot of things, but anyway. So I might need a skill, okay? So I might need to work harder or go get a skill. I'm adding to that, just kind of on the fly after this morning, conditioning. Conditioning to me also goes in this bucket because if you're asking your dog to do something like I was this past year in draft or carting, which was one of the things they had to do was pull a lot of weight. They each had to pull their body weight and then we put them together and they had to put their body weight combined, blah, blah, blah. And so that took a lot of conditioning. It wasn't a skill. They had the skill. They knew how to do the thing, but they had to be in condition to do the thing. Just like fast cat, like I don't really run her that often in a straight line for any amount of time, right? And so for her to do that well and not get hurt, not pull a psoas so that she can't go back to the agility ring, um, I need to do that thoughtfully, okay? Maybe it doesn't take a lot of conditioning, but I need to do it with thought, okay? And, at, and if I had to make a decision between agility and fast cat, agility is going to win. So if you are starting to fill this out as I am, um, there's a little tip for you today. And um, if you haven't gotten it yet, this is the planner. I like the planner because it has the calendar in it. If you don't want the calendar, get the workbook. It has everything that this has, but without the calendar. I love the calendar though. And it's kind of cool to have it all in one place. And this, both this and the workbook each, they both hold up to four dogs. So four dogs worth, um, we'll get you through. So um, anyway, hope that helps.